Hey guys, it's Red Nomster, and today I want to share with you something very special and close to me. It's been with me since basically the beginning of my channel because it's taken so long. Essentially what this is, as you're looking at right here, is the spawn area of my new adventure map called Phobos Apocalyptic Survival. Essentially it was first called Vanilla Realism, and that's what some of you may know it by. Uh, but the last video I did on it was about uh, 5,000 subscribers ago, and it's been quite a while. So essentially uh, what this is, is a spawn area that we hit a button at and then teleport, teleport us to the room in which we can then look at stuff. Of course, it's made by me, uh, as you may tell. It is multiplayer, up to two players. Uh, you can play with one person if you want. Make sure you go through player A if you're playing with just one person. And this is all the commands to the map that you will be able to see. So it's very interesting, in my opinion. A uh, little spawn area, very, you know, poorly done. I'm not going to build a giant spawn area for something you're going to see for 10 seconds. Essentially, uh, you come into your room, and then we then have, like, say, this little book. Ooh, I'm missing one there, and I have two there. Haha, <laughs> fixed it. This is basically beta testing. <laughs> and, of course, we look inside the important book. So you can see it's Phobos Apocalyptic Survival by Red Nomster. It's a Q&A. So essentially, if we go in, it says the basic questions, such as, What is Phobos? Phobos is an abandoned city surrounded by a normal 1.8 Minecraft generation, meaning you can leave the city at any time. There are no barriers, blockades, and there are no limits. So essentially, if you wanted to go find, like, a water temple or something like that and get, you know, some gold, you could do that. Uh, you can go to the nether. There are no limits. I don't care what you do. You're not going to be punished to do those things. There are no, like, barrier blocks separating or, like, endless ocean around the city where you can't leave. It's a Minecraft map. It's survival. That's what it is. It's an adventure map, of course, but the adventure comes in the form of the city that you can then explore. So, if we go a little bit further, will there be quests? No, this map is meant to be played as an alternative survival experience. You make your own story. The only storyline in the map <laughs> comes in the form of lore books that previous survivals, of course, have left. Uh, is this a zombie map? Uh, no, <laughs> that's up to you. There's a red button that prevents you from, uh, that prevents common mobs from spawning. It's actually a lever, of course, but the skeletons, creepers, and spiders will not spawn, and that's in the entire world, not just the city. So you won't be able to make spider farms or, you know, skeleton or creeper mob farms or anything like that. You won't be able to make gunpowder uh, from creepers to get. Uh, TNT. It's very crucial if you want those things to leave that in. Uh, but if you just want the adventure map roleplay experience of living in a city with zombies, uh, you can just hit that lever. Now, of course, you can go still find like a wider temple and there'll be guardians and stuff because it's not going to get rid of those because those things won't spawn in the city, of course. Uh, Endermen will still be there and uh, things like cave spiders that you won't see in the city will be there, of course, as well. So if we keep reading just a little bit, where are we at? Uh. Aha! Here we are. <laughs> what is Vanilla Realism? Of course, Vanilla Realism, or VR, is a collection of command block modules made by me, of course, that add, that are meant to add realism to the game. Effects such as thirst, fire pits, hypothermia, intoxication, zombie tracking, and more have been added to the world in a two-player compatible, meaning that you can then play with a friend if you have any, unlike me, of course. If you don't want VR because you're a dweeb, or if you're playing with a few other people, uh, more than two, basically, you hit this button, and that will get rid of all the commands right there, and essentially make it so that you can play, like, you know, like a Hunger Games map on this if you want, if you just want to put it on a server like that, or if you just don't want thirst for some reason like that, <laughs> you don't want the actual uh, experience of realism, and get rid of that too, and just use this map as a survival map in that sense. So if we keep on reading a little bit more, uh, okay, and then it goes on basically just to, uh, you know, thank you guys for the fact that I've been making this for a year and a half off and on. It's a crazy experience, um, you know, through the help of basically just the fact that I don't have a build team, it's just been me, uh, the, a few submissions that I've gained from people over time from my subscribers, uh, Planet Minecraft, of course, things like that. Uh, it's going to be a great experience, I hope. Um, but of course, it goes on to saying, uh, please link the trailer that's coming out in the next two days. Uh, that's a little bit of experiment. Basically, this map is coming out September 4th, 2015, meaning two days from this upload date. So if you're seeing it today, on your first, get hype. <laughs> and if not, and if you're seeing this past September 4th, there is a download link in the description, but also a link to the trailer as well. And the trailer uh, will probably be a little bit better explanation as to what the map actually looks like and stuff. But I'll go through a little bit of an explanation of that. Essentially, when you spawn in, uh, you'll be using these. You know, of course, the student will then teleport you to the school and give you stuff like books and algebra or whatever, you know, just random inventory like that. A uh, logger will give you wood and he'll spawn like a logging truck and a gas station worker as we'll click on now. will then teleport us to the gas station, update the game and all that, uh, do a little bit of uh, loading because we teleported a long ways away. And of course we have things such as a basic zombie killing weapon, uh, employee uniform, some charcoal because he's a gas station worker of course, he has something like that. And then we also get vanilla realism. And vanilla realism basically just explains the rest of the uh, you know, 
redstone, I suppose. So if we come in here, of course, we have like some loot in these shelves and stuff like that in the form of whatever. Uh, we have water bottles we can grab if we wanted to, but I'm not going to do it because I don't want to have to put it back. Uh, and of course, it's the gas station, as you can see. We can come over here. I already have a little fire pit right here, but I'm going to go ahead and break it just so I can explain it. Ah, da da. Oh, I didn't break it. <laughs> okay, and it's gone, of course. And I also got another piece of charcoal because there's a one in three chance you get charcoal from breaking a fire pit. But moving forward, vanilla realism. Basically, this is a survival guide explaining all the modules. I'm gonna do it quite quickly because I've done it multiple times in videos before. But I just want people who haven't seen any of this to be able to know exactly what's going on. So thirst. You start with water bottle. Drinking any potion will replenish thirst, but picking up any source of water will, will allow you to, you know, use the bottle. So if I come over here to this, like this gutter right here, I can pick up some water and then drink the water and then replenish my thirst. Now, eventually, uh, it'll say, if you don't drink water, of course, that you're getting thirsty or that you're dying of thirst in a, you know, you know more rare scenario. Uh, essentially, uh, vanilla realism works off of a no HUD display, meaning everything works at the bottom left of your screen in the chat. And if you're playing two player, you gotta keep in mind that these things will not be able to be seen by each other. You cannot read each other's minds. So if he's thirsty and he doesn't see it, uh, he'll <laughs> start taking damage eventually. Uh, because you won't be able to warn him because it's his conscience. He has to pay attention to it. Uh, but essentially we can keep on going. Uh, strength potions are alcohol. Water breathing potions are basically energy drinks. They'll be found around the map, but you can also brew them as well if you'd like. And I choose uh, strength potions because not a lot of people choose strength potions. There's not something that really, you know, <laughs> you, you, maybe, maybe if you're fighting the wither possibly, but other than that, you never really need it other than diamond armor and stuff like that. You, you just don't need it. And water breathing potions, uh, maybe water... Um, water temples that's very useful but <laughs> other than that um, you're never going to use it really so if we keep on going hypothermia if you walk on snow layers swimming being hit by the raindrops and of course uh, drinking alcohol will make you cold over time uh, it'll be displayed as a wither effect and then dehydration from not drinking is a potion effect realistic fire pits create a fire kit by throwing a stick on the ground and using charcoal and things of that nature such as uh, a normal book so a written book like this will not work i don't think but uh, I'm going to go ahead and try it, actually, because I don't think it will. I'm going to make sure, though. <laughs> Maybe you can burn your survival guide. So we throw a stick, and of course it creates it, and then... No, okay, that doesn't work. That's good. Uh, anyways, uh, if you just have a normal book that's not written in, or if it's not, you know, a book and quill or anything like that, it'll work. Uh, charcoal and or coal also works like this. Creates light, it warms you and prevents hypothermia. It's the only way you can prevent hypothermia as well. So keep that in mind, you want to have sticks and coal on you at all time, pretty much. Uh, but if you can't find coal in the city, considering below this is just sandstone mostly because it's built on a sand flat, you'd either have to leave the city and, you know, survive in the wilderness for a little bit in mine, or you can uh, find books or coal through chests and stuff like that. But books can be found through bookcases that can be broken and stuff like in the library or just random houses. Zombie! Oh no! <laughs> Anyways, uh, another thing I guess I can mention, uh, it's daytime, so it's pretty hard to show, but essentially, uh, if I get close to the zombie before he dies, it'll say that I was found by a zombie, or I have alerted a zombie. And essentially what that does is increases his tracking distance and the tracking distance of any zombie up to 30. And that means that his original tracking distance is 7. So if I get within 7 blocks, he'll see me, but that also means I can sneak around him if I'm like 8 blocks away, which is nice, which you can do in normal Minecraft. But if he does see me, every zombie in the uh, area gets their tracking distance to 30, meaning it basically uh, simulates hoarding. And that's pretty cool in my opinion. So you can hoard, you can sneak, and stuff like that, and that isn't, uh, in the, that's the cool thing about zombies. It doesn't work with any of the mobs, just zombies, just because that's how zombies work traditionally, but spiders, you know, that's not really a real thing, so <laughs> I guess zombies aren't either. Uh, but basically you can cook on this fire uh, by throwing food on it, raw food of course, and wait about 10 seconds, or we can just break it by smacking it to death, and we'll disassemble, and of course we got uh, some charcoal, because there's a 1 in 3 chance that we get charcoal in return. So, if we read on vanillaism a little bit more, uh, it talks about hypothermia and stuff like that, and the warming, of course. And, of course, I want to show you a little bit of something like this. Uh, if I go to slash weather rain, like so, uh, very soon you'll start hearing, like, a crunching sound, maybe, possibly. Yeah, right there. And it says my body is wet. Essentially, uh, your body will be wet from the rain and you will get hypothermia. Uh, but if we go ahead and go inside, we'll say it one more time because it happens every five seconds and it's a placeholder. So if we come in here, it might say it one more time. Nope. No, we're good. So yeah, if you come inside and aren't being hit by the rain, or if you're like sitting under that little roof in that car right there, that police car, you won't get the effects of getting wet from the rain. So it's a very interesting thing, it's something I invented quite a while ago, but uh, it's implemented pretty well. Uh, and you basically 
just have to avoid the rain, right? If you want to not be hypothermic. But to warm up, of course, you have to make a fire. Fire won't be put out by the rain or anything like that, so don't worry. Uh, but if we go ahead and go to wet it clear, uh, we should be good now, hopefully. Let me walk outside. We good? And we're good. See? <laughs> now, it's not just if it's raining, like I said. Uh, basically, if raindrops are hitting you, then you'll be wet by the rain. So it's something very interesting I thought would spice up the gameplay, kind of Daisy style. So if we go ahead and go a little bit further, uh, of course, I talked about the cooking of fire pits and stuff like that. And then uh, make sure you only have one fire pit uh, per map <laughs> um, before, you know, you're going to break it before you place another one. Just because, or I guess you could maybe? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, it just might be glitchy because it's not meant for that, so watch out with that. Um, zombie tracking, like I said, seven, you can sneak around them, stuff like that. Realistic injury, if you get below two and a half hearts, you'll start moving slower. And of course, uh, there's miscellaneous stuff, such as the fact that fire tick is turned off, and the fact that, you know, the weather rain thing wouldn't work if fire tick works, uh, was turned off because fire can't be put out by rain if fire tick is off, and that's the whole mechanic behind it. Uh, and also, if you're trying to create a fire pit, make sure you don't do it with something that has like a wood floor, or something that only has one thick floor, I guess, because lava might pour through the ceiling of the floor below it, <sighs> but that's beside the point. But don't light stuff on fire with your fire pit, it does happen, so watch out. Kind of realistic in that sense as well. And of course, we then have the fact that rain only hits you if uh, weather only gets you if you're hitting if you're getting hit by rain. Uh, and the basics that green text is good, yellow text is warning, and the red text is you're gonna die, sucker. So basically, that's pretty much the entire thing. Um, if you guys are really hyped for this map, it comes out you know September fourth, twenty fifteen, two days from this video. And you know, I hope a lot of you guys play it. I really appreciate uh, you know the feedback that you've given me such far. So you know, I really hope. You guys enjoyed the outcome of all this thing, you know. It's a pretty cool uh, little map, in my opinion. It's very big, uh, goes farther than the eye can see. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And leave a like, of course, if you enjoyed this video. And so show support for this adventure map in the year and a half it's taken. And uh, of course, I'll see you in the next video.